Well, welcome to a brand new episode of This Week in Apps. I'm Ariel from App Figures, but you probably know that already. I have a bunch of interesting insights this week, including a good way to find opportunities for developers. So if you're a developer, you should stick around until the end to see what that is. Let's get started. A few weeks ago, Microsoft and OpenAI announced ChatGPT, which is currently all the rage in the tech world, will be getting native support in Bing. Some call the move revolutionary and a Google killer, while others seem to think this kind of functionality isn't what users expect from a search engine. Now, I can see both arguments, but those aside, anything to do with ChatGPT right now is going to get tons of interest, like my last live stream, which I will link to in the description below. So I was curious to see if Bing's downloads are now soaring. The quick answer is yes and no. Let's have a look at the data. In early 2022, Bing was seeing about 50,000 downloads per month from the App Store, according to our estimates. And I'm gonna limit this analysis to the App Store. Downloads on the App Store grew a bunch in 2022, peaking at 127,000 in October, but sloped down right after. In total, we estimate that Bing was downloaded a little over 800,000 times from the App Store in all of 2022, and that's across all countries. A little over a week ago, the integration with ChatGPT rolled out and downloads rose sharply. A combination of a waiting list many signed up for, and a side note, if you're not using a waiting list for your newly published app, you're missing out. That plus general curiosity about ChatGPT and lots of ads pushed Bing to its highest day of downloads. Bing's App Store downloads peaked last Wednesday at more than 150,000 downloads in a single day, according to our estimates. They again sloped down right after, but continue to be higher than its average, and not by a little. So far, Bing was downloaded more than 700,000 times from the App Store since the new integration rolled out. That's almost the same as all of the downloads in 2022. Wow! I'm not at all surprised by this. There's just so much excitement around ChatGPT right now, and while it is free to access, it's almost always unavailable unless you have a premium account. Through Bing, you kind of cut the line. The real question still remains, is search better with a smart answering service? We've seen the panic Google is in, which led to a rushed announcement of Bard, Google's competitor. The rushed announcement promoted an incorrect answer, and it wasn't really an easy one to figure out, but someone did and wrote about it, and the news exploded, instantly dropping Google stock by billions, billions of dollars. This panic could be an exaggeration, but could also bring on real competition for Google, which is something Google really isn't used to. What do you think about a chatty search engine? Let me know in the comments, and while you're at it, give the video a like if you like it. Next. I noticed DraftKings rose to almost the top of the App Store on Sunday, Super Bowl day, but the spike was short-lived. Looking at DraftKings downloads before and after the Super Bowl, the difference isn't as high as I had expected. Downloads normally spike during the weekends when more events take place, where DraftKings averages about 40,000 downloads from the App Store according to our estimates. This Sunday, downloads were higher. Our estimates show a little over 71,000 downloads for the app from the App Store. That's almost double when compared to the average, but overall, not as many as I'd expect if we consider just how many of these were driven by big ad campaigns incentivizing a download by offering free money. The rules around advertising gambling apps are much stricter than other apps and games, making this a not so cheap push. And the resulting downloads don't feel high for what it is, in my opinion. I usually share experiences that moved in-app from the real world, and betting obviously just isn't one of those. But speaking of money, changes to tax filing rules plus improvements and lots of ads have made TurboTax one of the main go-to apps for filing taxes here in the States. Looking over the last few years, downloads in January and February go up consistently, although the trend is not really crazy high. But that's changing. In 2023, downloads are going to reach a new milestone. According to our estimates, plus my forecast, TurboTax will see more than a million new downloads from the App Store in February, and that's the first time the app will cross the million mark. According to our estimates, TurboTax has already seen an increase of 27% in January, bringing in nearly 900,000 new downloads from the App Store alone. We expect downloads to grow to 1.2 million in February, the highest for the app. Of the many things that moved in-app in the last few years, this is one of the most relevant for most people, in the US at least. It is interesting to see how quickly downloads slope down after February, even though the deadline for filing taxes isn't until April. 
Can you guess why? Leave me a comment if you think you know. And next, a game. I noticed an unfamiliar icon was hovering all over the top apps list in the App Store over the last few weeks and just had to track it down. The app, or rather game, in this case, is Dumb Ways to Die, a set of mini games, and the developers describe it in a self-deprecating tone, mentioning the word dumb way too many times for my taste. Normally, this type of stuff doesn't phase me, but look at the downloads. According to our estimates, since starting a big run in early February, the game has been downloaded more than 1.3 million times. That's million, six zeros. More times than Bing even after it added support for ChatGPT. That's a lot. What's more interesting is that these downloads weren't generated using Apple search ads. I couldn't find one keyword this game was advertising in. If not Apple search ads, where are these downloads coming from? For that, we have to zoom out a bit and travel back in time. See, this game didn't come from some clever studio that spits out hyper casual titles at all. It came from Metro Trains, a public transit operator in Australia. Metro Trains created a music video by the same name in 2012 and it became popular and got turned into a game in 2013. The video became mega popular on TikTok over the years, but recently, as recently as January, became even more popular after user turned the title into a jingle, which is now used in many videos, including in some promotional videos from big companies. The downloads followed. The game is no longer owned by the train company though, now it's owned by the game studio that developed it all the way back in the day. That studio is called Playside, just a side note. Now, TikTok fame, isn't really easy to achieve, but it's great once you get it, if you can get it. If you're a developer, you should definitely be working on that. And last, an interesting stat that's also a great opportunity for developers, that opportunity I mentioned at the beginning of the episode. There are millions of apps and games on the App Store and Google Play, but just how many are being developed actively? Knowing the numbers could be the key to finding opportunities for development. I'll show you how and what I mean after looking at the data first. So I used Explorer to group all the apps and games available for download right now on the App Store and Google Play by when they were last updated. I used percentages instead of absolute numbers because the stores are very different in terms of the number of available apps, and this makes a lot more sense. Looking at the groups, it's clear most apps, 34% across both stores, haven't been updated in over two years, which is what Apple calls abandoned. The same holds true when looking at each store individually. On the App Store, 30% of apps and games haven't been updated in more than two years, and on Google Play, that figure jumps to a whopping 37%. Looking at the category breakdown of abandoned apps and the mating games to make it simpler, it's education up top, then utilities, then business. I'll get back to those in a second. Those are followed by lifestyle, entertainment, productivity, food and drink, reference, health and fitness, and travel. Now, education may not be an easy one to develop for, but utilities and business certainly are. I went through the popular apps and many are still getting many new downloads and many new ratings, meaning they're still in use today. The list has many games, but also apps from big developers, including Apple, Instagram, and even the USPS, which hasn't updated its flagship app in a long time. If you're a developer, here's the opportunity and how to capture it. Abandoned apps that are still getting downloads just beg to be replaced by newer and better ones, and even if not newer or better, just ones that are getting updates. At the least, all you can do is listen to their users. That's the opportunity. So all you really have to do is find an abandoned app that's still popular, brownie points if it's also ranking well in some relevant keywords, but you don't really even have to worry about that. And what you should do is build an app that caters to the users who are complaining in reviews and also offering feedback in those reviews. So really all you have to do is read reviews of abandoned apps, build the app, magic. Well, really business, not really magic. I'm going to publish a tutorial video showing exactly how I can do that in just a few days. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you aren't already. Now these figures aren't surprising overall, and as development becomes easier thanks to improvements in Swift and Kotlin on the native side and non-native frameworks like React Native and Flutter, I expect more apps to flood both stores and get abandoned more often. Again, a great opportunity for developers who are paying attention. And that's all I have for you this week. If you've learned something new, please give the episode a like, and if you'd like to see more, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Here's another great video you can go and watch right now. I'll see you next week.